World War I games, especially on Roblox, have a problem. There's a reason that there's barely any diversity compared to the World War II genre. Even on Steam, how many relevant World War I games are there? Why is this? And why, despite all the hurdles, has Horizon Blue done this genre so well? If you were to look up World War I on Roblox, you certainly would be deprived for variety. Really, your only two options are games with the most arcadey playstyle imaginable, and others on the opposite side that try to be more serious, all in look and feel like they were made in 2014. Absolutely no hate to any of these games. I have played each of them to death and will recommend them to anyone, but the lack of variety where each game furls perfectly into two categories is undeniable. Compared to the plethora of World War II variety you can play, ranging from the same arcadey feel I mentioned to some that are closer to hell let loose than Roblox, not to mention the entire aircraft and tank subdivisions that exist. It is genuinely disappointing to see. All of that's to say, World War I games were dealt a worse hand, and are vastly overshadowed by their younger sibling. Yes, it was a comparably smaller war, but that can't possibly be the entire reason for its lack of diversity between games. The truth is, they're just boring. Why would you want a bold action for the novelty of being historical when World War II checks the same box as well, with the addition of submachine guns everywhere? That's where you get the more realistic but underwhelming side of World War I games. Yes, you have an accurate depiction of the time, but you also have the added gimmick of a painful process when it comes to engaging with players. There's a lot of World War I games with like 50 players that you'll find that fall exactly into this category. However, one notable one is Trench Warfare, which I think really punches above its weight class. This game takes the more realistic and accurate approach with solely bolt guns and pistols, but it tends to fall flat when executing on captivating gameplay. The gameplay with some of the top tier guns has you wait an excruciating amount of time between each shot, and that's not to fault it, it is one tap, but it does leave more to be desired. Game devs are smart though. They know what their audience wants, and so they'll add extra elements to the game that take away from the accuracy and playstyle, but increase the experience of the game. Entrench takes a completely different approach and cranks the dopamine up to 11. Not only with their extremely fast paced gameplay, but with Entrenched, only 3 out of the 9 classes have a bolt action, and one of them is a sniper class. Trenches takes a similar approach, with every player able to have their hands on a light machine gun if they dedicate a small amount of time to unlocking it. These arcadey type World War 1 games are extremely popular compared to the more accurate World War 1 experience. And so, that leaves a void in gameplay. No game that could capture the accuracy of World War 1 and have captivating gameplay to reach an audience. I would argue Centara is an exception. It has extremely fast paced gameplay while also giving 95% of players a bolt action, though at the cost of your average life expectancy on some of these maps being 30 seconds. Now, we're going to need to put a pin in this for me to talk about something completely different. I love the game Frontline Carolia. I've been playing it for forever, though I still haven't unlocked some of the top tier guns, and it wholeheartedly is my favorite World War II game. It features a unique front of World War II, being the Winter War for Finland, and stands out from the other games with its emphasis on accuracy in the game. The gameplay also has this very unique feel. It's one of the slower paced World War II games, especially comparing it to the likes of D-Day and even Operation Overlord at times. It has a great mix of strategy and gameplay that doesn't really exist on any other games on Roblox. That's why I was incredibly surprised and excited to learn that they made a World War I game with very similar mechanics and gameplay to Frontline Carolia, though tweaked to better fit into a World War I environment. The experience in Horizon Blue is much less clunky than in Frontline Carolia. You can sprint while doing any action, the bipod system was reworked entirely, and a proper third person was added. Horizon Blue has another trick up its sleeve when it comes to making compelling gameplay. It's the same thing Guts and Black Powder does to make itself extremely entertaining whilst only having flintlocks and swords. Teamwork. Every single other game does have an emphasis on working together as a team to win an objective, but it just falls flat on its execution. Trench Warfare has officers with surrounding buffs, but those barely come into play as the only classes people ever really play are Rifleman and Raider. And a lot of these games require the team to push collectively to capture the objective. However, all of these games are incredibly individualistic, even with the measures taken into place. You'll often see the majority of people in Entrench not anywhere near the objective they're supposed to be on. 
Horizon Blue has the exact same system, requiring an amount of personnel to capture an objective. However, it does one crucial thing differently. Classes are limited. There can only be one machine gunner, rarely two, on the team at a time, as well as only two to three for both officers and the grenadier type class. This creates a heavy incentive for both the enemy team to band together to take down a strong class, and your team to protect said strong class. The buff of the officer to surrounding players, in my opinion, is done better in this game compared to Trench Warfare. If the officer is near six people, can blow a whistle to start a charge, which completely negates the stamina and suppression mechanic, creating more incentive for players to work together as a group to successfully take an objective. In addition, on the German team, four out of the five classes are semi. Only the single machine gunner has an automatic gun. Everything else is either bolt or hammer operated. You have to get to rank 7 before you can even unlock a semi-automatic gun on the German team. Not to mention all the little things that I love about Horizon Blue that seriously make it stand out from every other game. Like, they give you an actual indicator of where your bullet will go in third person. This is extremely better than the crosshair that just gets slapped on the middle of your screen in most games. As well, the fact that when you pull the bullet back to reload, you will lose the round that's already chambered. So many games overlook this and it's great to see it in game. It is just so well polished compared to everything else you can play. This game has its cake and eats it too. Accurate as well as engaging gameplay that looks incredible. Hey, if you've stuck around here long enough, that means that you love hearing me rant about stuff I like in Roblox, so make sure you subscribe because there'll probably be more of it eventually. That's a lot for you. Bye-bye.